Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we are talking about metal roofing fasteners and considerations when buying metal roofing fasteners. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals. Today I have Ed from Triangle Fastener Corporation. Ed, thanks so much for being here. No problem, thanks for having me. Yeah, so we're talking about metal roofing fasteners. Mm -hmm. There's a couple main types, first of all, that we're gonna cover, and that's concealed and exposed, Correct. right? So tell me a little bit about, let's start with concealed fasteners and what they mean, what they look like, and, and some considerations when deciding which ones you need. You know, typically your concealed fasteners are on a clip, they're underneath your panels. So they have a low, lower profile head, a pancake head, we have an ultra low profile head, just to get as low as possible. Uh, as far as considerations go, they go about what substrate you're going into. You know, if you're going into OSB, if you're going to plywood, if you're going to light gauge metal, heavy gauge metal, there's a lot of different variations of what you'd be using. Can you tell me about um, what the numbers mean when when we when we go to buy a fastener, yeah. they'll have a description with some numbers. Tell me what that means. Yeah, absolutely. So when you look at a fastener description, typically you're seeing a bunch of numbers jumbled together, and it really doesn't make sense to people who don't know what those numbers are. So you got a like a number say like a ten, then you have a hyphen, and it'll say thirteen. Then you have an X by by a length. So what that means is ten is your diameter, hyphen thirteen is how many threads are in one inch of the fastener. And then the by is the length of the screw. Okay, gotcha. So when it comes to the diameter, what is that actually measuring? That's the gauge of the metal. Okay. Yeah, so basically a 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 14 gauge, which is quarter. Got it. And so on. So when it comes to metal roofing applications and Sheffield specifically, yes. what, what, what is the typical size, typical diameter? Yeah, that your typical diameter is almost always number 10. When it comes to the ultra low profile, that's also a number 10. And then you also use our 1013, which is your normal gimlet point screw, probably your most common fastener with us with that and the ultra low profile, and both number 10 diameter though. Okay. So when it comes to going into uh, steel versus plywood, sure. Uh, tell me what, what, how that makes a difference. Okay, now the diameters can, can still be the same. It can still be a number 10, but the thread pitch will change based okay. on the thickness of the steel. Got so it. the thicker the steel is, the th more threads per inch are typically on a fastener. So I, I guess you. if you're going into metal, instead of being a 10, 13, like it is for a wood, it'd be a 10, 16 for metal. And why is that? Is that so that it has more to grab onto with that well, substrate? It's, it's drilling and it's tapping. So when you're going into metal, you have a drill point and that's also, that's piloting the hole for the threads to tap into. Got it. So when it comes to head type, what's the differences there? Okay, so head type, now if you're not using a clip fastener, you are using exposed fasteners, and exposed fasteners are typically a hex head drive, normally a quarter inch, and then they're also painted. They have an EPDM washer built onto the screw that we have assembled on there for you, it's also, which the washer itself is also pre-painted to match your guys' panel. I got you. And uh, we have a video about how to install fasteners, check that out as well. Um, but one thing we talked about is Burr Buster. Correct. Can you tell me what Burr Buster means? Yeah, so Burr Buster, what we developed as part of our fastener is a finer threaded point that runs in. So as you're running it in, typically you're running in like a self-drilling screw, it's, the metal has to come out of the hole it's drilling. Mm -hmm. So what happens is this run screw running, it kicks out like a pigtail, and that pigtail can split the washer, it can create a valley for leaks. Well, the Burr Buster eliminates that. Yeah. And the Burr Buster will not kick us out as much dust, you won't have as much metal on the roof, so a little less rust on the roof as it weathers. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about coatings a little bit. Sure. Uh, tell me about what the fasteners are coated with and kind of what materials they can go into. Yeah, most of our fasteners, especially anything that's engineered in your systems, all have our tri-seal coating on it. It's your uh, typical 1,000 hour salt spray coating. Um, I think treated wood is mm -hmm. something they can go into. Talk about that. Yeah, so the, the, since we coat all of our fasteners, it's kind of a wide range of where you can use them, including treated lumber. You can use them in treated lumber, you can use them in non-treated lumber. It's kind of an industry standard just to have zinc plate, but we like to add the tri-seal coating in almost all of our fasteners gotcha. just to be ahead of the game. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about the actual material the fasteners are made of. Sure, sure. So we have multiple different types of you know, base material. So we have 410 stainless, we have 300 series stainless. Our normal fasteners are carbon steel, but it does have the tri-seal coating out okay. of corrosion resistance. Yeah. And I guess that would make a difference depending on where you're located, the yeah. substrate. Yeah, whatever the environment is, what you're going into. It could be, you know, if you're by Oceanside, you're going to want to use something 300 series stainless. If you're just in a regular, you know, typical environment, you can get away with just carbon steel with a coating on it. Got it. So I know we mentioned this in some other videos, but I think it's important to reiterate here. What tools and RPM speeds, what does that look like, uh, would you guys recommend? All right, so most everybody likes to use impacts. They're easy, they're cheap, you know, they run at the very similar RPM to what we recommend, but we don't recommend them because of the strength and the torque. 
Uh, so what we do recommend is a tool that has a clutch that's adjustable on it. So depending on what substrate you are going into, you're always getting the correct seating of the fastener. Got it. What people don't understand about impact drivers is a picture of a nut on a bolt and putting a wrench on it and hitting it with a hammer to tighten it. Yeah. That's what an impact's <laughs> doing. If you want that, it only takes like 70 pounds of pressure to break a fastener. Yeah. So when it comes to cost, what are some things that affect the price of fasteners? And uh, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, sure. So things that can certainly affect the price of the fasteners, what they're made out of. You know, stainless steel is obviously gonna be more expensive than what your carbon steel is gonna be made out of. Uh, you know, coated screws are gonna be more expensive than a zinc plated screw. You know, so there's manufacturing prices that are more expensive sure. than typically not having them manufactured that way. Um, we like to, like I said, step up our game a little bit and we coat everything. So we might not always be the cheapest in the game, but we're gonna provide you the best fastener for your application. Yeah, and what are some things that could happen if someone uses an, you know, an inferior fastener? Sure, now, you could, so much as an inferior fastener, if it doesn't have the right coating on it, you can get a reaction between the base material and your fastener, okay, and yeah. the fastener can fail. You know, or whatever the weaker of the two metals will fail beforehand. Rivets are one thing that we haven't really talked about. For metal to metal connections, um, that's what we use in our details. Tell me about rivets. Sure, so uh, not only do we provide all of your painted fasteners, we also match those same colors for your trim work on your rivet end. Yep. Uh, you guys are normally using a number 43 rivet. That is an eighth inch diameter with a 3 16 grip. Uh, that means that's how much material it's gonna put together. Um, they're all made out of stainless steel. Well, I appreciate it, Ed. This has been great learning about fasteners and some kind of considerations to buy. Comment down below if you have any questions. Big thanks to Triangle and big thanks to you, Ed. Right, thank really you. appreciate thanks it. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and we will catch you next time.